All right, today we're going to start our next project, which is based off of scratch board art. Okay, what's the difference between texture and value? Think about that to yourself and then um, figure out exactly what the difference is. Well, value and texture are very two diff completely different things. Okay, value refers to how light or dark a area or an object is. A drawing is said to be a complete value drawing when it is in black and white when it has no color. Texture refers to the surface quality in a work of art, the way things look or feel. Describing words that are, uh, that are based around what texture is, is rough, smooth, silky, shiny, fuzzy, hairy, etc. So value, you're going to show how light and dark an area is, but then you're also going to make sure that you're adding texture in this project to show um, how something feels. The principle of design we're going to be focusing on is variety. Um, when an artist places different visual elements next to one another in a work of art, there is variety. As I said, think about a variety of donuts. That means you wouldn't have just one donut flavor. You would have different types of donuts flavors um, in front of you. This goes the same with uh, elements in art, right? So if there's different types of lines in your artwork, different textures, and different ways of showing values, then you'll, you'll have variety. We are going to be creating a scratch art project. Scratch art is a graphic technique used to create value drawings. When using scratch tools such as a stylist, a scratch brush, or even a scratch knife, you can create value drawings by scratching off the black ink and revealing the board underneath. This technique is similar to drawing with white pencil over a black paper. Just to remind yourself, if you are at home, some scratch tools that you can use, you can use, um, you can use uh, toothpicks, a key, you can even use a small um, um, like kitchen knife if you have that. Um, you can use um, really anything that has a point to it that would be able to scratch off a coin. Okay, I cannot give you these these tools because um, they are um, uh, the only place they're allowed to be is in my classroom. But um, there's definitely tools that you can use at home. The artist that we're going to be looking at is uh, called, her name is Beth Croms. Beth Croms is an illustrator from Pennsylvania. She studied painting at um, Syracuse University. She began teaching art in public schools, but she really fell in love with engraving and scratch art. Um, she then began creating illustrations for children's books by using scratch art. So as you can see on your screen, here are some of her um, drawings. They're very whimsical. You can see that one, there's a lot of value in there. So there's tons of variety. And two, she even uses texture in some of the um, animals and the fur and things like that. Um, remember, all of the areas that are white and gray are the areas that she actually scratched away. So if you really take a close look, it's kind of amazing how detailed oriented she was when just scratching away the black paper. What we're gonna do today is we are going to start our animal scratch art project. So I created a scratch art of a um, giraffe here. As you can see, I scratched out the entire background. So that's why you can see like those little lines of my scratch art pencil um, because I wanted it to be white. You don't have to do this, but I was just showing you that you can. Um, also remember you wanna choose an animal um, that one takes up the whole entire space of the scratch board. So think about if you are printing out a picture, um, you want it to be as big as a computer paper. So we're going to go over a few scratch art value techniques. What you will do is you will cut a small strip of scratch board off of your scratch board that you have at home to create a value scale. You should have at least six squares that start off very white and then slowly become black. Use any value techniques you want, hatching, cross hatching, stippling, or even scribbling. Let's take a look at how Miss Barlow does this. So what I'm going to do really quickly is I'm just going to explain to you how to add um, value into your scratch board. It is important to remember this logic. When we used to create um, value with charcoal or with markers or with pencil, we would add more pressure or add more charcoal or graphite onto our paper to make things darker. Now we are doing the complete opposite of that when you are adding value to a scratch board, okay? So you have to really think about that when you are creating this piece. 
remember, the more pressure you add and the thicker your um, lines are in your artwork on the scratch board, the lighter the value is going to be. So you want to remove the dark values in order to create the light values. So I'm just quickly showing you here um, how I made, um, how you can see how there are different types of values you can create by just applying a certain amount of pressure or making lines lighter or darker, okay? Um, so obviously for my first uh, square in my value scale right here, I've created, um, it's completely white and I've applied a lot of pressure and I created um, a white square by just kind of scratching away. So for this next one, because I want it to be a little bit darker, if you will, what I'm gonna do is I'm obviously going to leave some of those like black lines in between my lines. It's not going to be a full coverage of white. And I'm also going to apply a little less pressure so that I'm not taking away um, really big like lines of the scratch board, all right? And as you can see, um, my next part of my value scale becomes a lot darker just from making sure that I don't um, apply too much pressure and, you know, remove all of the black from that part of the value scale. Okay, um, I'm gonna do the same exact thing on the next one, but it's going to get darker as we continue. Um, so here I'm going to use more so of the tip of the, um, the scratch tool, and I'm just going a lot lighter with my strokes, okay? So you wanna make sure you really focus on the pressure that you put on because you really don't want to make things too light where you can't even see them. Um, so I'm just showing you a quick hatching technique here. Remember there are tons and tons of different techniques that we'll go over um, later on in, the, in this part of the video. So my next square is going to be a little bit lighter. As you can see, I'm not applying as much pressure. I'm leaving more black space in between each white line and it becomes a darker value. The next one is going to be extremely light to the point almost where you can't really even see. I'm gonna make shorter strokes here of lines as well. It's not going to be as long as the ones in the beginning of my value scale. And then my last square, I'm just going to leave completely black because that's the darkest value. So think about that too. Our really dark values are just going to be left the color of the scratch board. All right, so as you can see here, um, we have the value scale that we just that I just created. Um, remember, the more pressure you put down and the uh, um, thicker your lines are, the lighter your area is going to be. The less pressure you put down, um, the lighter the areas are going to be. So as you can see, there's a nice gradual change from really light to medium like gray tones to dark. So there are a bunch of different ways you can add value to your artwork. I'm gonna go over all four of these techniques and you get to choose which one you like the best. Um, so the first one that we're going to go over is cross hatching. You've definitely heard me talk about this one before. Um, this is the one that I like the most, but essentially what you're doing is you're creating like a grid-like pattern and you're following the curves and the movement of the item or thing that you're drawing or scratching away, I should say. So as you can see, the darker um, the darker values over here, they are done by creating less grid patterns, okay? Whereas the lighter values over on this side are going to be um, created by, cre um, by making lines that are very close together and you're putting a lot of pressure down. Um, and then it gradually goes away, okay? Um, our lightest area over here, this is hatching. So that was cross hatching, this is regular hatching. Hatching is just going in one direction, either up and down, left to right, diagonal, and essentially same thing. Applying a good amount of pressure will give you the whitest of white and also making sure that your lines are close together. Whereas applying less pressure and making sure that your lines are further apart is going to give you obviously darker values. The next uh, value technique is stippling. Stippling is 
very, very time consuming when you are doing scratch art. So if you really want to do that, you may. Um, it just does take quite a bit of time. I uh, remember stippling is just essentially making little dots or little curves, right? So the more dots that are closer together, the lighter your areas are going to be. The less dots that are further apart, the darker your areas are going to be. And then the next one is actually a really fun one. It's essentially called scribbling. Okay, so what you're doing is you're creating these like really organic movements. Um, and obviously, if you can continue to layer them on top of one another, you're going to get really, really light areas. Or um, if you just kind of scribble very lightly and really kind of keep them away from each other, you'll get darker areas. So these are just some really quick techniques to use when you are creating value on a scratch board. Okay, so after you create your value scale on your scratch board, it is now time to choose your animal image. You can either look up an image of an animal of your choice on the computer, or it can be a picture that you took maybe of your pet or something like that. Print out the image in black and white and make sure that the image, when printed, fills up the entire computer page paper. Step three is transferring the image onto scratch board. So instead of actually drawing the image, we're actually just going to trace it or transfer it. I'm going to show you a quick video after I do a quick explanation. What you will do is you will take out your printed image and flip it over to the back of the image where it's blank. You will then get a uh, light colored crayon such as yellow, white, orange, light green, red, etc. And begin to color the entire back of the paper with the crayon. Use a lot of force and a lot of pressure in order to make sure you get a nice layer of wax on the back. Lay your printed image out on the top of your scratch board with the image side facing up towards you. Grab some tape and tape your image onto the scratch board. Take a pencil and begin to trace those lines. Okay, let's take a look at how Miss Parlow does this. For this part of our project, you will need your printed out paper of your animal that you chose, your scratch board, and also a light colored crayon like um, an orange, a yellow, a light green, a light pink, anything like that, a really light crayon is going to work. So what you are going to do is you're going to take your crayon and you're going to start to apply a lot of pressure onto the back of your printed out picture of the animal of your choice. You are just essentially filling up the entire back of the um, thing that you printed out or the picture that you printed out with this light colored crayon. I am pressing pretty hard because I want to essentially transfer this image right here onto my scratch board. So I need there, I need for there to be a thick layer of wax or the crayon on the back in order for me to um, make this work. The reason why we do this is um, this is a, a good technique to actually like kind of note and remember. Um, anytime you want to kind of um, draw on. Um, something or you want to kind of transfer an image without tracing it and without um, drawing it freehand, you can use either, um, you, you know, you can use kind of all these different techniques in order to transfer an image onto a piece of paper. Um, if you were going to transfer it onto a piece of paper, you would have to use charcoal behind here. But as I said, we are using a, we are transferring this onto a scratch board. So that's why we have to use some sort of light wax um, to kind of fill in the rest of this, um, the back here to be able to transfer it. Okay. So I've just filled in um, the rest of the uh, back of this picture. What I'm going to need now is you definitely need a piece of tape. I highly suggest you grab a piece of tape. You're going to take your scratch board and you're going to line up the picture with your scratch board where exactly you want it to be and how you want it to sit. And then you're just going to tape the uh, top of your picture to the back of your scratch board. Make sure you don't put the tape on the top of your scratch board just because it might leave a residue which is tough to get off. So I'm just taping this on both sides. Okay. After I do that, I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to start to trace around all the outlines or the contour lines, we like to call them in art, of the animal of my choice. I also like to note where um, there are certain lights and certain darks because this project is based fully on um, value and texture and things like that. So I'm just really noting where the lights are, where certain things go in, where certain things are round, where they're a little bit pointier. And I'm just creating, as I said, almost like tracing just the picture 
with a pencil. I'm not pushing too hard with this, but then again, I'm also not pushing too light. If you push very, very hard, you're going to have a little bit of an issue because it's going to create almost like an indentation into your scratch board. So just make sure that you're really um, kind of going nice and light as you are tracing um, the animal of your choice. This is a, a this is way easier than um, free drawing it. Um, this is just a great technique to understand how to transfer images onto a scratch board. So I'm just going to continue this. Um, I'm tracing all my lines of the giraffe that I chose. Remember, you don't have to choose a giraffe. You can choose any animal you want. Print it out, make it large, make it take up the entire paper so it takes up your entire scratch board. Okay. So I'm just going in, as I said, I'm also tracing any sort of, um, you know, lines that I think I'll need to make this, um, to kind of help me out. After I do that, I'm just going to peel the tape off the back. Okay. And as you can see, voila, I have the transferred image right onto my scratch board. There is a little bit of residue from the wax, but that's okay. All right. So after you transfer your image onto your scratch board, you are now beginning to add value and texture. Take the time to begin to scratch out areas that need to be lighter. Use different value techniques to show dimension. Use your printed out image as a reference. Think about where the lightest and darkest areas in your image are. Also think about what kind of textures you have on your image. Please take your time because scratch board is very, very hard to, obviously, when you put down a a mark on your paper, you cannot erase it. So you really need to take the time to think about exactly what areas need to be light and which areas need to be kept a little bit darker. Here's a quick little video on how to add texture and value with scratch board tools. All right, so we're gonna practice um, and I'm gonna show a little model on how to use your scratch art um, tools and how to start your scratch art drawing. Um, so as you know, in the first video that you saw, you saw that we created um, the little like transfer with a um, crayon onto our scratch art board paper. And now it's time to start scratching away and looking at our image to kind of find out where the values are and things like that. So first off, there's a bunch of different tools you can use for scratch art. Um, you can use a toothpick. You can use... Um, uh, a scratch art tool. Um, you can use an X-Acto knife. Anything that you have at home is fine with me. Um, that works for you. Um, in school, I do have a few of these supplies that create um, some really nice details and things like that. But I'm just going to be using a regular um, uh, scratch art tool. It is a little pointy, so just beware of that. Um, they're not that sharp, though. But just, as I said, be careful. Um, so some things to think about. So for my picture, I have this like very, very white background here around my giraffe. So I just started, as you can see, scratching away some of the um, background just to make my uh, giraffe stick out a little bit more. You don't have to do this. I'm just doing it and I wanted to show you. So what I do is I hold my scratch tool um, just like a pencil and I'm usually just going in one direction. But if I'm hatching, I mean, if I'm cross hatching, then I'm obviously going to go into another direction. Um, depending on how big of a surface that I want to remove some of this scratch board, I can either use the tippy like point of this or I can use almost like the side edge. So because this is such a large area um, that I'm trying to remove from the scratch board, I'm using the side edge just because it's easier for me to maneuver and also easier for me to remove as much as I can because as I said, I'm removing all of this black background so that my uh, giraffe really stands out and pops out. Okay, so I'm just going to continue to do that. I'm not going to show you how I do the whole thing, but you kind of get the gist of how it works. Okay, um, also with scratch board, just to let you know, um, obviously you're scratching away this like black layer. So there is going to be a little bit of dust or like a black layer film that comes off of your paper and that's totally fine. All right, so I'm going to start by um, creating some of my... Uh, like values here. So this is why it's important to print out your picture, or at least look at your picture on your phone in black and white, because it's easier for you to see like where are the darks, where are the lights, things like that. Um, so as you can see, I started kind of uh, scratching away some of these lights. I did a lot of cross hatching here. Um, you can do the same. You can do regular hatching. It's really up to you how you want to um, and what kind of technique you want to use when creating value um, in your with your scratch board. Um, so I'm just kind of getting a little bit technical here, as you can see. All right. So 
Um, what I'm going to look at first is I definitely want to look at this like area right here of my um, uh, giraffe's eye. Okay, so I'm going to look really closely and I can see where that like kind of lip is. So what I'm doing is I'm starting to lightly scratch away some of these like light areas. Not too much though, because the rest is going to be pretty dark. I also want to scratch away some of these like lines here. But then again, I also want to leave a lot black. So I'm just starting to slowly scratch away what I think is going to be light compared to what is going to be dark. Remember, the dark areas of this are going to be left dark. So leave the scratch board. Don't start scratching away everything or you're not going to have a piece that looks like it has value. So I'm starting to scratch a little bit harder away here because as you can see, I have this like really light part here. So I'm just going to start to scratch some of that away. And as you can see, I'm using um, the tip of my scratch board um, tool to start scratching some of that away. All right. And remember, I want you to think about like the thickness and the thinness of lines, right? So um, we're doing a lot of cross hatching and hatching here because it's very hard to like get really, really, um, it's really hard to shade obviously with this. So it's good to just start to think about, okay, how can I start adding value by just taking away some of the, the scratch board. Okay. So you really want to be careful where you're scratching and how hard you're pressing down. Um, and how thick your lines are, because obviously the thicker your lines are, the more um, the more white is going to show. Whereas if you use really thin lines, like the tip of this, it's going to be a lot better for adding those values and things like that. So as you can see here, I started to kind of remove some of this area where the eyelash comes out. Um, and you can start to really see that I'm starting to form this part of my eye. I'm leaving a lot of this really dark um, because it is going to be um, pretty black because that's like a, the blackest part of this, the eye. So I'm just starting to scratch away. Being very, very careful when I get into, especially these like smaller areas, using the tip instead of the whole, you know, the whole thing. All right. Um, remember, we are using some cross hatching and hatching techniques, as I said. So it's important to think about the shape of the animal that you're creating. So as you can see, this is like kind of like a, a curved area. So I'm going to start making that curved area. Okay. And I might even cross hatch up here. Kind of make it a little bit lighter. Okay. So you can see the difference between really scratching away and then really lightly kind of going in with some lines just to create almost like this, this shadow effect.